Oh my god, guys, the weather in Ireland right now is just beautiful. I think it's for the good of the universe and everybody watching right now that I put on a hat because I just look like a wet dog. Okay, how's everybody doing today? I have a super exciting video for you today. And as you all know, I am a massive fan of home assistance. I am a massive fan of just smart home in general. And I'm trying to just like, my room is just a one massive smart room because I can't really do the entire house yet. But I am, I'm heading there, I'm getting there. If anybody wants to sell me a smart doorbell or like a smart Hoover, please do. I would greatly appreciate it. Moving on, today we are going to be talking about Home Assistant. If you guys don't know what Home Assistant is, damn, the lighting is a lot worse today than it normally is. Home Assistant is essentially your smart home devices hub. So you know that tablet, th this big thing? That would normally be running Home Assistant, except I use it for drawing now. So we need to fix that because Home Assistant was very important to me. I could just walk up to the tablet. I could turn around the knobs on it in order to turn on the lights. I could see my 3D printer's progress on there. I could see what Steam game I was playing. I don't know why that was necessary. I could see where I am. I could essentially do like routines. For example, when I'm leaving the house, everything turns off. And when I come back, everything is on waiting for me because this thing would be tracking my GPS. It's really, really cool. Now, as I said, that's gone, so we need to fix that. And today I'm going to be installing Home Assistant and maybe showing you guys how to do it as well. And I'm saying maybe because normally what you guys would want to install it on is a Raspberry Pi, this magical device that I was showing off yesterday. Except this is a Raspberry Pi 1. And the Raspberry Pi 1 doesn't even have Wi Fi without this dongle. So it's kind of hard for me to imagine it'll be able to run Home Assistant. So what I'm going to install Home Assistant on first is my Unraid NAS, because that is what I will be using it for, because that thing is running 24-7 anyway. So I'm going to take you guys along for the journey with me. But just before we begin this video, I promised you guys on the Discord yesterday that for my 3D printed beautiful shelves, I would do two mug sips. The problem is I already drank all the coffee. So instead, I'm going to show you my beautiful, beautiful 3D printed shelves. Check it out. Look at that. They are absolutely beautiful. Look at this. And there's like, my microphones are in there. That reminds me, I didn't actually connect to the microphones. God damn it. Hello guys. Perfect. <laughs> so my beautiful shelves have been 3D printed. That is the Hive shelf, just in case any of you are interested. It's very modular, it's very cool. Now let's move on to actually going through the beautiful process of installing Home Assistant. It's literally going to require me to do like two clicks. So I'm just going to access my Unraid NAS right here, go into apps and type in Home Assistant. Now we will attempt to install it on the Raspberry Pi in just a second. It says here Home Assistant Core is the core of Home Assistant automation platform. I'm going to guess this is what I want. So I'm just going to click apply and it's going to install itself. That's how simple it is on Unraid. Now, if you guys are doing it on the Raspberry Pi, which I assume you guys will be doing it on because not Many of you have Unraid. If you guys want a video about Unraid, by the way, tell me down in the comments section. I'm willing to make that. Unraid's really, really cool. Great platform. If you guys want a NAS, really, really good platform. Okay, so let's try and actually work with this. So first of all, let me try figure out whether this thing can actually run Home Assistant. It says here, not recommended hardware. Raspberry Pi. Do we care? Let's install it anyway. So Home Assistant for the Raspberry Pi is called HASIO. HASIO is basically a version only for the Raspberry Pi because it's going to be the same for all the Raspberry Pis. So even if you guys get a new Raspberry Pi, this should essentially be the same. So I'm gonna download it right here. This link will be down in the description below in case you guys want to do this with me, which I imagine quite a lot of you might want to do, especially if you have a Raspberry Pi laying around. HASIO is now just being downloaded. Okay, so as you guys can see here, this is my screen right here right now and as you can see I have downloaded the Hasayo Raspberry Pi I just clicked on Raspberry Pi here and that downloaded the entire thing for me okay and now we need Etcher of course we always use Etcher guys you guys know what's up we've been using Etcher for quite some time now I, I really like this um, it just keeps all my micro SD cards really nice and safe can I give it a four gigabyte micro SD card or is that not going to be enough okay so you guys will need a micro SD card put it into your micro SD card reader which I have right here here at my table, because I stuck it to the underside of my table, you launch Etcher, let's launch Etcher. Okay, so now that Bill Etcher is launched, you just select your beautiful generic micro SD card, click flash from file, find the file we just downloaded, image.gz, and just click flash. Your micro SD card will be erased, all your data will be deleted, I'm not responsible for any data that gets deleted from your micro SD card, please back everything up before you, wow. 
<laughs> anyway, that's going to do its thing right here, right now. It's just going to flash its beautiful file. While it's flashing, uh, we are going to take a look at Unraid. And Unraid has finished. Okay, so let's go into Docker. Let's launch the web UI. And this is what you guys are going to see once you have Home Assistant installed. Of course, you guys will see it on this, but it, uh, it's, 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 it's in Polish for some reason. Anyway, the first thing there says name. So let's type in my name. Uh, the mystical will be the username. Oh, my OCD did not like that. Password, password guys. We are going to get this beautiful software here, which is called Bitwarden to make a password for us. And if you guys want a video on how to set up Bitwarden for yourself, make sure to let me know. Okay, my house, my house, my house is, what is this? Oh, it's a router, UPnP router. Hell yeah, let's go. I mean, I don't know what, why my UPnP router is showing up in Home Assistant, but I don't care. <laughs> Everything you have will actually just show up here as integrations. So if you actually have something, it should show up here as an integration. So for example, I have ye light bulbs. They're not gonna show up here because that needs to be added as a configuration file. In fact, I'm going to try find my old configuration file from that tablet and try transport it to that and we'll see what's up. Anyway, let's click finish here. And boom, here we go. Beautiful. Why is it in Polish? Uh, and as you can see, the first thing that actually shows up is just the weather. But this thing can be filled up with absolutely everything in your house that is configurable as Home Assistant. So Belena Etcher here is just validating the file. And while this is validating the file, I am going to actually try and find that old configuration file, try transfer it here to show you guys what you can truly do with Home Assistant when it is set up properly. And I will be right back to you guys once Bella Nature is done validating that file and once I have my configuration file fully set up. Okay, so I actually have everything recovered, believe it or not. Uh, it looks like this right now. There's a bunch of errors because the thing just has no clue where everything is because IP addresses have changed and uh, API access codes have changed. But as you can see right here, I have, for example, the battery life of my Xiaomi Mi 5 S Plus, the battery life of my Mi 8, my Ender 3 percentage, this is of printing. Then I have a map with, where all the users would normally show up if the API keys weren't ruined. Uh, then we have the current state of the Ender 3, either printing or not printing. Then we have both me and my second phone showing that I'm either in the house or outside the house. Then we have uh, a OKKP, which is my Steam username, and it says I'm online. And if I were to turn on a game, it would actually show that I'm gaming there right now. Uh, then we have my lights, which would normally be here, and I'd be able to, on my tablet, just rotate the knob virtually and either turn them on or turn them off. It looks really cool, super futuristic. And then we have currently gaming, which I'm not gaming right now. So there would be a game there if I was gaming. But there you go, that's super, super cool. So now let's uh, move on to actually setting up Pass.io. After the SD card has been burnt, this is what's going to show up. You need to create a folder called config in top caps, a folder called network, and then create a file called my network into this file you need to paste this right here, just like that. Then you put in your secret Wi-Fi password right there and you put in the SSID right here. Just like that. And then you save the file and that means you should be ready to take out your micro SD card, connect it to your Raspberry Pi and start everything up. So why don't we do that right now? Okay, so now that we have this set up, I am actually going to just straight up plug my Raspberry Pi into my table, just like I would. So take out your micro SD card, put it into your Raspberry Pi right here, just like that. And now let's plug it in. And my monitor should switch to the Raspberry Pi, just like that, and we should see the output. Oh, that's a power surge. <laughs> power surge, no. Okay, you guys, so I managed to get everything connected. It turns out a four gigabyte micro SD card just wasn't going to cut it. But as you can see right here, right now, everything is setting up. I can see the network manager script is starting up and I actually managed to set up the rest of my actual home assistant that I'm personally going to be using, which is not on the Raspberry Pi 1, which is, again, not a recommended device. So let's check out what this looks like right now. And as we can see, this is what it looks like when it is properly set up. Uh, the Spotify just hasn't been set up yet, but let me show you how I can turn on the lights. Just like that. And if this was on a touch screen, you can just move the knobs like this and totally just set it to 100% brightness. And then you can actually select the lights here as well, turn them all off or turn them all on. And it's pretty, pretty cool. You even have these settings here where you can totally change the colors and you even have some weird modes like uh, police where it just goes 
like this from time to time. Um, <laughs> as you can tell, they have some pretty cool, pretty funny modes. So pretty damn cool. Now let's switch back to Has.io right here, where I hope the network setup that we created has worked. That is correct. It says here, link becomes ready. I don't see an IP address that I could access though. So I am kind of hoping for the best here. Uh, it's still going. Of course, it's still going. This thing is going to be super, super slow. I think we need to just let it go and uh, wait for this to finish. And I will be right back to you guys once this is complete, if it ever is complete. <laughs> uh, okay guys, I tried. I genuinely tried. The Raspberry Pi 1 will not run Hasio, unfortunately. Uh, the only way to run it would be to connect it with an ethernet cable, and I'm gonna be very honest with you, I really don't feel like doing that right now. I don't even know if I have an ethernet cable because I have a wireless dongle, but I tried to initialize it within the console and it just says that the driver failed to initialize. So I'm going to guess that Hasio is just incompatible with this extremely old hardware. But if you had a newer Raspberry Pi, which I totally recommend you get, you should be able to do exactly what I did there and find the IP address of, yeah, see there, it jumps back. It says direct firmware load for blah, 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 filled with error minus two. You should be able to find the exact IP address either through your router or just, it might just say it here, or actually you should be able to access it by just typing in hasio, that's H-A-S-S-I-O dot local colon 8123. And by typing that into your web browser, uh, HTTP address right up there. You should be able to just access the Raspberry Pi once it is connected. Of course, first connect it to a screen, make sure there's no errors, and then you should be able to disconnect it and have Home Assistant running on your Raspberry Pi, just like that. Or of course, if you guys want Unraid, go ahead, get Unraid, and I can make a video if you guys want it. Comment down in the description below. Unraid's great, honestly. Uh, of course, you could also run Home Assistant on your computer, but that kind of ruins the point of it running 24-7, being able to access it on your phone or anywhere. So yeah, that's going to be it. Uh, as you can see, we have Home Assistant running perfectly, perfectly fine on... Uh, 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 why? On my NAS on Unraid, and this is what it looks like. Of course, you can skin it, you can make it look however you want it to look. You can customize these tiles, move them around, and I am probably gonna launch this onto this tablet again, because now it's going to be running 24 seven off of the NAS. I really hope you guys liked this video. I decided to drag you along on this adventure with me, because uh, why not? Uh, I hope you guys didn't get lost uh, on this adventure, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. I decided, hey, you know what? I'm gonna set up Home Assistant, and I'm gonna bring my audience along with me. So. I hope you guys liked it. Uh, I hope I inspired you to set up Home Assistant for yourself because it is a truly amazing and great tool that you can have running 24 seven in the background and control all your devices with it. Even Alexa integrated with it somehow. It found my Chromecast, has my lights, it has everything. And remember those routines, those routines are really cool. When you leave the house, it can turn off your smart plugs, things like that. And then when you come back, it can turn them on. Really, really cool. So that is going to be it for today's video. Again, I hope I inspired you guys to set it up for yourself so that you can control everything right here from your phone, from your tablet, from your computer even, because let's just remember, it is also web browser accessible. So if you guys liked the video, make sure to give it a like. If you disliked it, I guess this button works too. But please tell me why down in the comments section below. If you guys are interested in this type of content, if you guys want to join the community, we have a Discord link down in the description. Make sure to smack that with your forehead. We have a Reddit down in the description, which I really hope you guys can join. Post some spicy memes on there for me. And yeah, that is going to be it. If you guys like tech videos daily and VR videos on Mondays and Fridays, make sure to smack that subscribe button with your forehead, ding my bell, and see you again in the next video. Peace.